everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in. In today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to transition the high impact practice strategy of Think Pair Share to an online format. Traditionally, Think Pair Share is when students are given a prompt or a question, they respond, then they get up, find a partner, discuss their responses with their partner, their partner then responds to their responses, and vice versa. After this, students return to their seat and it can either be a collaborative discussion or the instructor moves on. However, with just a few clicks, you'll see how easy it is to transition this into an online format. The first thing you do when you're logging into your Blackboard, and what I do, is I go to JNET on the university's website. So I log in. And after I log in, sometimes I'll be prompted to uh, verify myself if you just saw that screen, but since I've recognized this uh, computer, I don't have to um, do that two-step uh, identification login. So when I log into JNet, I come to the JNet home screen. I found over the years for me, I like to log into JNet, then click on Blackboard. And once the Blackboard page has loaded, you're going to be able to see a few things on the screen. You'll notice the tabs over here activity stream, courses, organization, calendar, messages, grades, tools, which does sound like a lot <laughs> if you've never used it. Have no fear throughout this, uh, these short trainings. Hopefully you'll get a better idea of how you can use those and incorporate high impact practices. For this session, I'm going to just click my courses. Now, as the My Courses pulls up, you will automatically, on your homepage here of the course uh, course list, you're going to see your courses that you are either enrolled in or you are teaching. Now, this semester I am not teaching. However, last semester I did. So, for our purposes, I'm going back to the fall semester, uh, 2019. You'll see I did teach three courses. I'm going to use my UNIV Section 109 as an example. This is a freshman course. It's a first year seminar course. So you'll be able to see on, the, on, a, on a scale of what the expectation might be for your classroom. You can raise that expectation, uh, require citations, um, in text and references you can really add as much as you want and add the difficulty uh, as well on the left hand side if you scroll down for our think pair share today we're going to utilize the discussion board to showcase how we can use a think pair share when I get to my discussion board I've already created five, six discussion boards already in this, uh, in this section. I'm going to scroll down just to show you what it looks like, but on every one I do repost the directions up here. Discussion board assignment. You want to make sure when your students are responding, even though it is listed in your syllabus, Sometimes when they get online, they too can be confused. So just to be clear, I explain specifically what I want them to do. How much it's worth, how many words. So I scroll down here to week five. And for each one, I have questions listed. You can either assign small groups in which a larger class, maybe a 30, 40, 50, 60 and up, that might be beneficial to keep a small course, mini, uh, mini groups within that larger group. So for this, uh, this example, 
I've listed three different questions. Like I said, you can assign the smaller groups one question, or you could assign everyone all three questions, or you could assign that small group three questions. Basically, whatever you think works best. Now, I'm going to show you what it looks like when your students respond to you in Blackboard. Okay. I'm going down here. I can see how many responses have been in each post. Now I've asked them to each student to do an initial post of 250 words at least and then I've asked another student from the class to go back in and reply to that. Reply to the initial student's post. So in a face-to-face the student who uh, is posting, the original post, would be the first person to talk in a think pair share. So students think about what they're going to say. Maybe they jot down some notes. They get up. They're then paired in a classroom setting, and each one discusses. This is the online format of it, where the student does initially state their views of it. Uh, and then there's another student that does respond back. Here you'll see student posting and then the response. If you wanted to take it a step further, you could then have the initial post of the student, the student that initially posted, respond back to the other student that responded to their first, uh, to their first post. So you have this initial discussion board post, someone replying to it, and then the initial post E can respond to the, uh, to, the, to the person that responded to it. Basically, you're creating an online dialogue. Now, if you're thinking, man, how can I do this? How can I create one? So I'm going back. So if I go back to the discussion board five, I see all my students. And when you create a discussion board, and I'll show you how to do that right now, you can attach this to your gradebook. So every time a student clicks on this, they are, uh, clicks on this, begins and submits, you are notified that this student responded and has submitted their work. You can also see who hasn't submitted, and you can even go up a notch and see, okay, who hasn't responded to the discussion post? So I'm going to create a forum. So if you go to the discussion board, I'm gonna create a forum. And I'm just gonna call it week 10 discussion post. And then in here, I'm going to put what I want them to do. Now, for our purposes, I'm going to shorten this. Um, I'm going to say, please respond with at least 250 words. And then respond to at least two of your other classmates posts. Okay, so I've put in the directions. Now those are pretty vague, but you could leave it just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it available. You could also turn it off and not have it available, uh, and then you could put the specific dates. So let's just say no. I didn't want to have it available. I can click, all right, you know what, I'm going to have it displayed tomorrow. And then I'm only going to keep it open for a week. So I go and I'm like, all right, you know, I'll just keep it on there. They need to, and you can set the time, this is obviously midnight on uh, third, uh, Friday, excuse me. But if I was like, you know what, I'm going to let them have it at 7 a.m. I'm going to let it be available. And then I'm going to give them to the 3rd, April 3rd, at 11.59 to submit. Okay? And you could also have this in your syllabus, lined out, 
And once the students see that it's lined out there, they, the participation rate significantly increases. So we go through here. All right, viewing threads, standard view, no grading in forum. I would like to submit a grade, but I'm not going to submit it here. Well, I will submit it there. Okay, and then I can put the due date. So I would put April 3rd at midnight. Okay, and then I'm going to submit. Well, probably should have put the. So then I can go to my grade panel. I always like to go to full grade. You can also click needs grading, and that's a great tool if you're trying to grade a bunch of things. And then I will go to the end, because that's where the latest post will be. And I can also edit here. So I can edit column information. Okay, now I can put the grade in. I can put the points possible and then the due date. So previously I didn't put the post uh, the points possible but again grade center name uh, I'll just put week 10 discussion posts and I'm going to put 50 points well, it's got what it's due Include this column in Grade Center, yes. Show this column to students, yes. Show statistics to me. I always put no, uh, but you could select that about the uh, statistics, how many of them and what was the average of the class. That might actually help them. I don't normally select that. So I've submitted. I have my Grade Center up. I'm ready. As soon as a student posts, it will alert me. I can go in directly to the post. So if I go here and it says needs grading, uh, this is one here, but I would have a lot more to grade down here. I just click the user attempt and I can, I'll just give you an example here. I'll click the user attempt. It'll take me directly to their submission and then I can grade it from there. So here's the submission. The assignment instructions will be here. You can either click on the image on this one. It was obviously an image to click. For I had them go to Havelina Night Out and they needed um, some uh, documentation that they completed it. Uh, there were other two other videos on there so I'm certain that those were more uh, clear but you could also bypass that that uh, that grade as well if you were like you know what I've already seen it or um, you know I know they went there they showed it to me in class or something like that you could easily bypass that and when you go to the grade center just click over that grade and put in the, the grade that you want so even though they've submitted something or they haven't you can always overwrite the grade Okay, well, I hope this helps. Thank you.